Hey gang, what's up? Equipment Editor Jim Park here. In this video, we're going to take a walk around the outside of Western Star's newest on-highway truck, the 57X. Western Star's made a number of improvements in key areas, and they're saying it's going to deliver about 5.5% better fuel efficiency than the 5700XE. That's saying something. I'd love to know what you think of the 57X, so please leave us a comment down below, and while you're here, check out our other 57X videos, including our tour of the cabin sleeper, the safety system video, and the driving video. Don't forget to poke that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos from HDT. Okay, let's dig into the 57X. So we'll start over here on the driver's side with the front of the truck. Uh, from where I'm standing, you can see that the hood is, of course, sloped. And some of the corners you'll notice, compared to the older models, is uh, more rounded. Uh, so that obviously is going to improve the aerodynamics a little bit. We've got these uh, sporty looking aerodynamic intakes over here on the sides of the hood. There's also a really neat looking LED light inside that air intake. Uh, that looks pretty cool when you're looking at it from the front of the truck. And around here on the back side of the air intake is the hood latch. Uh, this is really easy to get to, no problem even if you've got a big pair of gloves on. And around the front of this rounded two-piece bumper, something new here. Uh, and I wondered why they didn't do this on the first model. But th this is actually a flow-through airport to uh, get a little bit of air onto the wheels and the brakes. I don't think there were any reports of the uh, tires and wheels running hot, but this is certainly going to help keep the, uh, the inner side of the wheel a little bit cooler, especially in hot weather. Coming back a little bit further here, we've got the uh, side fairing, and hidden below this is the uh, battery pack for the truck. And they've designed this in such a way that it's really easy to access. Not that you're going to be digging into your battery compartment every day, but down inside this little porthole here, there's two latches. And all you have to do is lift those latches up, this drops back towards you, and then you literally just lift it off. Set it aside so it doesn't get damaged in the shop, fix your batteries, and then put everything back. It's really easy to see what you're doing. You're not going to miss connecting that down there firmly into place. And to lock it back in, you just put that back there. There's two cotter pins on each side to lock that little grab handle down so that it's not going to go anywhere. This window on the passenger side is standard. Around the other side there's a door and a window. Both are optional. You don't have to take those if you don't want them, but uh, if you do, they're in the book and you just write that into your order. Let's go on back a little bit further. I'll show you the battery system for the uh, onboard HVAC system. We'll get into some of the features of the uh, rear end of the truck. Okay, so let's have a look here on the back deck, see what we've got. So there's the two fuel tanks, of course. Uh, We've got optional uh, capacities from 60 to 150 gallons, and you can get those in uh, 10 gallon increments. Uh, these cab side extenders, sleeper side extenders, these are 24 inch. Uh, they have a 12 inch option available for day cabs. And what's interesting about these is their breakaway. The, the back piece is obviously a plastic material that's flexible. And right down here, these are attached with these breakaway clips so that if you're doing one of those 90 degree maneuvers to back in and oops, you get a little bit too tight, prang one of these, you'll look bad for a couple of days until you can get it put back on, but it doesn't destroy the whole back of the cab. Uh, back here, uh, this little deck that you stand on, it's also a battery box cover. Uh, this, these are the batteries for the onboard electric HVAC system. Okay, the other interesting feature of this new Western Star design is the clipping and routing of the cable. Uh, what they've done with this is they've created separate channels all through the frame for the fuel lines, the air lines, the electrical lines. The idea being to prevent the chafing from happening between the cables. And any technician or maintenance guy will tell you one of the biggest headaches fleets have these days is uh, chafed and rubbed wires and cable. So Daimler and Western Star have gone a long way to sort of keeping these cables tightly bundled and channeled Within, uh, within their own channels here. So that's a, a nice touch. The other interesting feature here is they've reduced the amount of bundling that you have to do. In the past, you know, the OEMs would cut a harness so many feet long, and regardless of how many feet your truck was, 
they just bundle up a bunch of wire, stuff it in the frame, tie it in, and away you go. Within a year or two, you'd have all kinds of problems within that bundle. So they've minimized that. All the uh, harnesses and stuff are basically cut to length. So it minimizes the amount of bundling they have to do when they're putting the thing together. So let's go over onto the right hand side and have a look at what's new over there. These uh, flow below uh, extenders are optional. Uh, these are appearing on more and more trucks nowadays because A, they work, uh, B, they're well mounted and well secured to the truck and they've uh, proven themselves in, in the field now for several years. And if you're serious about fuel economy, I really can't imagine why you wouldn't look at them seriously. Let's go forward and have a look at the, uh, the front of this puppy. A couple of things going on here up in the front. We've got uh, the radar sensor right here built in. That's got the uh, active braking assist and the adaptive cruise control uh, time and distance settings. It's again radar based and it's fused with a camera that's up in the windshield. Now this hood is super light and really easy to open. Uh, you can do it from the front here, just, I'm 200 pounds or something and I'm just kind of leaning into it. No problem pulling that open. I wasn't working too hard. The other way to do it, I'll close that all by itself. There's gas struts in there to prevent the hood from just crashing down into place. But if you go around the side, I would say even easier to open from the side. And since you're already at the latch, uh, you've got your choices on how to open it. So let's have a look under the hood here and see where some of the driver inspection points are and see what kind of improvements they've made under the hood. So underneath the hood here, we've got our uh, DD15 Gen 5 engine, 560 horsepower max and 1850 pound feet. You know, from a driver inspection point of view, pretty much everything you need to look at is right here on the left side of the truck. Obviously coolant level, really easy to see. Uh, your power steering reservoir, again, Fluid levels are really easy to see. Uh, it's not a maintenance item, but just for interest's sake, this here is the servo motor, this unit right here, uh, that controls the uh, active steering assist that'll uh, keep you in your lane or you know provide some other benefits for stabilizing the truck and crosswinds and what have you. That's an actual electric motor attached right to the uh, right to the steering gear. So really, um, my only complaint about this side of the truck really is a placement of the dipstick, which I think is a little bit awkward tucked down in there where it is. It's not impossible to get to, but I would think, you know, guys with big gloves, especially in the wintertime, may have a hard time uh, getting their mitts in there. So if Detroit, if you uh, see this video, take note of the placement of that dipstick. It's not optimal. Uh, oil filler cap up here. Again, not a bad place for it, but if I was hefting a gallon jug of oil six feet in the air, I think some of it may wind up spilled down the side of that shiny new DD-15 rather than going in the hole where it belongs, but hey, what do I know? Let's go around the right-hand side and have a look. So over here on the right side, uh, not so much of what the driver needs to see on a daily inspection, although uh, you're required to inspect what's underneath the cab and underneath the hood. So things are pretty easy. They're all out in the open. Nothing too much is hidden away where you can't get to it. Uh, it's easy enough to inspect the belts. You can see the serpentine belts under there. Uh, you can't check brake adjustment or anything like that because they're discs in this case. But again, uh, lots of room under there if you had to get into it. Your air dryer up here in the front. Windshield washer fill is in a good place. It's right here, easy to reach. If you had a gallon jug, no problem pouring it in there. Now in behind here, it's not really a maintenance item, but this is the front end of the electronic vault. Uh, we'll go inside and see where, where that takes you from the outside. But they've moved most of the electronics, most of the uh, control componentry, the electronic stuff, um, under the cab, behind the firewall, uh, with access to it from both sides. It's all in the same place on the truck, so you don't have to go hunting for an ECM here, an ECM there. They're all together, which is a nice design feature. makes it easier for the techs when they're doing their diagnostics. And that's pretty much all I've got to say about the front of the truck and inside and outside. Let's climb up inside and uh, have a look at what's going on in there. Well, that's more or less all the big stuff on the outside of the 57X. Uh, just a few more details here, though. It's got a bumper to back of cab measurement of 128.5 inches and a front axle setback of 54 and a half inches. It's available with a wheelbase of up to 361 inches. You've got steer axle options from Detroit, Meritor, or you can choose Hendrickson's Airride Steer Tech Axle. 
Drive axle options include Detroit, Dana, and Meritor up to 46,000 pounds. Engine offerings are exclusively Detroit on this one. You can get the DD13, DD15, or DD16 with ratings up to 600 horsepower and 2050 pound-feet of torque. The DT12 is a standard transmission offering, but drivers can still get manual gearboxes from Eaton in 10, 13, and 18-speed models. I kind of like this truck. I think it's got a big, beefy look to it, and it seems really well put together. It's pretty much what you'd expect from Western Star. There's lots more to see on the inside, too, so check out the interior walk-around video. We'll dig into the new digital dash, and we'll take you on a tour of the new sleeper. And don't forget to check out our other 57X videos and all the other videos on our rapidly growing archive. Please give us a like, leave a comment, and hit that subscribe button. I'm Jim Park. We'll catch you on the next one.